Japan, traumatized by its tragic fate in 1945, is a good citizen of the world, but a passive global power, and still hesitant about its proper role. The victim of territorial unilateralism on the part of Russia, and the target of bitter war memories on the part of China, Japan's regional isolation is further intensified by the continued mutual animus with its immediate neighbor, South Korea, in the face of intensifying tensions with China. For Japan, the bilateral link to America is currently its only security blanket. Last but not least, India, the most populated country in the world, entertains large global aspirations, has high self-esteem and significant military forces, but lags visibly behind China in its economic dynamism, modernization, and power. Moreover, its conflict with Pakistan, the latter a de facto ally of China, places it in potential danger, while the unresolved territorial disputes and conflicting international ambitions, especially with China, represent an ever-present challenge to peaceful stability between the world's two most populous states. Last but not least, the ethnic, linguistic, and religious mosaic of India has some ominous similarities to the former Soviet Union. In today's world, Eurasia, writ large, is the central arena for potentially disruptive international conflicts arising out of the foregoing condition. It is the setting for latent as well as for our already surfacing territorial disputes, conflicts over mineral or water rights, collisions over maritime demarcations, not to mention religious, linguistic, and ethnic animosities. The existing conflicts in the Middle East and the surfacing nationalistic tensions in Asia thus pose the risk of a further spread of regional violence with potentially serious international consequences. A larger war over a fragmenting Syria or an American conflict with Iran precipitated by Israel could in turn have seriously debilitating consequences for the currently already vulnerable world economy. To make matters even worse, in the longer run, the currently still facing Pacific rivalry between America and China could in some circumstances become increasingly antagonistic. Highly visible pressures in the direction of mutual hostility have lately been rising in both countries. I view as particularly ominous in that regard the fact that some recent American and Chinese publications have been previewing openly the possibility, indeed in striking military detail, of an eventual armed collision between these two leading states. That makes it all the more important that America as well as China both take steps to reassure each other that their current global preeminence is not fated to degenerate into a dangerously destructive global conflict. 